Hello everyone, my name is Mateusz Pusz. I am the Chief Software Engineer and also the Head of C++ Competency Center at IPAM Systems. I am also a C++ Trainer and a Consultant. Uh, today we'll be talking about the physical units library. This is a subject that I spent a lot of time lately trying to figure out how to do it in the correct way. So we'll be talking about the software handling, dimensional analysis, and physical units conversions, um, and how to make it right, and also we'll uh, look on the solutions that are currently on the market. But why do we care about this? First of all, you should answer this question. So probably you are aware of this story of Mar Mars Climate Orbiter. This was one of the famous disasters in, in our IT industry. This was a robotic space probe that was launched in 98, in December. It cost a lot of money uh, for development, for the launch, for the, for the operations, and so on. And after a bit more than half a year, it reached Mars, nearly. It was about to go through this trajectory uh, to, to the orbit. As you can see, Earth is, is here. So we expected that we will lose the communication with the, with the, with the probe for, for a short time when it, it will be gaining the, uh, the, entering the orbit over the Mars. But actually, after the communication was lost, we never reestablished it. What happened is that instead of this trajectory, uh, actually the, the probe went through this line. So probably 170 or 60 kilometers in a space distance and dimensions is not too much. But, but it actually made a big difference here. Uh, the probe went too low for the orbit maneuver, orb orbiting maneuver, and the gravity of the Mars was too strong, so it dis disintegrated in the Mars atmosphere. Uh, what was the, the problem here? Uh, the primary cause was the uh, lack of understanding or, or communication between two teams working separately of the, of the, of the parts of the software. Uh, the um, NASA was, pro working, was providing their components uh, according to the specification in SI units, this is International Standard of Units. And Lockheed Martin was doing their component and using United States customary units. And basically it was contrary to the, to the specification. The result, actually, specifically, was that one of the components were providing uh, the data in pounds per second, another one expected newtons per second. And because of this, we lost a lot of money and time, and basically, this, yeah, we should be ashamed of such things. But yeah, probably you know about this, but why do I personally care about this? A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, so it was like three years ago, uh, I was a competition glider pilot. Uh, this is me flying over the mountains in, in my glider. And you can actually see here a small device. This is an embedded uh, car navigation system running like something like Windows CE 4.0, really old system, operations, operational system. And there is a software application, open source application that I contributed to. Uh, it's a tactical flight computer for, for, for aviation. It basically provides us the current position over the map. And also, uh, in real time, it calculates, uh, for example, the distance that, that you can uh, achieve from, 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 this, uh, from this altitude. So you can see here this dotted area. This is the area that I cannot, uh, that I cannot reach from, from this specific location, taking into account my altitude, the glider um, efficiency, uh, wind, and terrain, and, and other conditions. Also the same. Looking from the vertical view, this is my, 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 my uh, airfield that I would like to reach. This is my position, and I have a peak here. I want to make sure, if I select this route, that I will be able to go over this peak, because as you know, gliders do not have engines, yes? So sometimes it's really hard to gain altitude if you, if you lose it already. So, yeah, this is how I, I became familiar with the problem of dimensional analysis and physical units conversions. I don't want to blame anyone here because this is open source software written by, by like three to four developers doing this in their free time. 
they are doing their best and they are serving the community. It's really popular software actually. Uh, but it uh, also inherited some code base from even older C project. So you can expect how it works. But this is, this is not typical only for open source projects and not particular this one. As a trainer and consultant, I work with different corporations and I know how the production code looks in many, many different industries. It's not much different from this one. So this is the function in, uh, that provides us the bearing to, to specific latitude, longitude, and it returns the, uh, the data through the argument, distance and bearing. There is another function in the same header file that does similar stuff, but notice the order of the arguments. Yes, and I assume that's not the unique example here, probably there are more, and if you, if you think that it can, cannot be worse, it can. This is basically how we tend to write software. Uh, maybe not we, but some people tend to write software, yes? <laughs> to, to be correct. This is how production software often looks. Also, it's not only about re overusing doubles. There's also a lot of magic constants in the code. We don't want to write code like this. And this is basically how, why I care personally about, about this, 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 this stuff. I would like to change something. So did you ever have to write the code this way? Why we are doing this, yes? Basically we are doing this because we don't have tools in the standard library. What I've noticed working with different corporations as a trainer and consultant, I found out that introducing Chrono to C++11 was a breakthrough for the industry to, 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 to work with, 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 with timestamps. So even though there were some open source libraries earlier doing, doing similar stuff, people didn't use them. Putting this something in the standard makes it accessible to everyone, it's easy to use, and also easy to, to for example, pass through the, like, like the uh, legal stuff in the company. Yes, it's much easier to use just standard or maybe boost, but, but probably other open source libraries sometimes are not allowed to be used in the, in the, in, in the production. There is lack of good alternatives. There is, of course, boost units and other libraries, but in many cases, they provide poor user experience, as you've seen, as you will see during this presentation, and also introduce many dependencies, like you have to include half of the boost in order to just have boost units working for you. And as I already said, custom third-party libraries that are either not standard library or the boost, or maybe Qt, are not allowed. So you cannot just take some, some anonymous uh, project from, from, from the GitHub, from, from vendor you don't know, and, and put it in production code because probably someone will complain about it in your, in your company. And we can always do this by ourselves, yes, but actually it's not that easy. This one is, is tricky. Of course, you can provide some custom implementation for specific needs of your project, and it may be constrained, but for sure there will not, not be a generic one that will handle all of the use cases because it's pretty complex domain. So before we go uh, to, the, uh, to the details, let's talk about a bit about the terms and definitions here. So what is the international system of units? Is the group of seven base units, 22 named units, 20 prefixes to those units. Those base, base units are the time, length, mass, electric current, thermodynamic temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Each of them has its own symbol, its own unit, and unit name. Of course, this is just basic building bricks for doing something bigger, yes? To building all of the derived dimensions. So here are some examples of the derived dimensions that doesn't have their own units, and they are just using the, um, the base units, like squared meters, uh, cubic meters, meters per second, and so on. There are also a lot of derived dimensions that have their own symbols, like Hertz, Newton, Pascal, Joule, they can be either expressed this way of, on, or in terms of the base units here, yes? Or in terms of different units. What's the machine analysis? The machine analysis is basically analyzing that such an equation and the data provided in watts, joules per second, and all other variations is exactly the same. So you can easily add them, subtract them, or maybe 
do some multiplication division operation to get another dimension. What we would like to have is treating units like a typical integrals, typical scalars, just to divide them and have the same unit divided by the value. You would like to have a conversion between the same, the same dimension, but different units, like one hour is 3,600 seconds. You know this from, from Chrono already. And the same for, for, for the length, for example. We can also want to convert dimensions, like one kilometer per one second is 1,000 meters per second. Or two kilometers per hour in two hours will give us a distance of four kilometers. Or if we will go for two kilometers with two kilometers per hour, we'll, it will take us one hour, yes? If we do something 1,000 times per second, it's one kilohertz. Or if you are dividing 10 kilometers by five kilometers, it is just a scalar, too. So this is actually a dimensionless result, yes? All of this has to be supported by the Unis library in order to work correctly. Besides that, we also have those SI prefixes that you know, for example, from to ratio. And nearly every unit can be prefixed with, 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 with such an SI prefix. Of course, not for every unit it has sense, but, but theoretically it can. And world doesn't end on SI, yes? There are more systems. We have customary units, we have imperial units, and more. So what the current system, current state on the market? So a quick review of what we have right now. As a toy example, we'll use the simplest possible function that will just calculate the average speed. We want to provide length and time to the function and get velocity with a simple division. So for example, I want to provide average speed in kilometers and hours and get the speed in kilometers per hour, like I would do with doubles, yes? If I provide miles and hours, I would like to have miles per hour, like I would do with doubles, if I would write this by, my help, by myself. I want to have additionally compile time safety to make sure it's correct. I would like to have support for multiple units and prefixes. And of course, as I said, there should be no runtime overhead. So the same as I would do with doubles. Uh, as an example here, I will provide a boost units and the a bit different library from Nick Holthouse that pro provides a bit different approach to, to the design. There are, of course, more, but today we, don't, we have limited scope and, and time, so we'll just look into those. There's of course also Stud Chrono from Howard Hinnant that basically we should probably, I, I think we should base on because this is standard, proven standard in the industry. So, so it's good to, to, to work on this one. So let's start with boost units. It's not that easy. Actually, if you think that you can include one header only, you are wrong. You have included a lot of them, and sometimes it's not easy to figure out which header has to be has to be included because code, for example, compiles but doesn't link. Uh, there is a lot of support in boost units for many, many different systems and units, but actually it turned out that if you want to write even something simple as a very speed, there is not enough types for you provided. You have to provide your custom types, like you have to provide your own kilometer-based unit uh, type dev. You have provide your own length in kilometers. You have provide your length in miles, and so on. And also for, for the time. So this is really simple stuff, and you have to do it by yourself. So let's implement this one. We have average speed that takes boost quantity of length and boost quantity of, of time, and it returns the boost quantity of velocity. Uh, we can provide the the value. 220 kilometers, notice the, the multiply syntax here, and two hours. Yes, we have also defined kilometer per hour, and we can cast it to kilometers per hour and then print. The same for miles. Even though we didn't um, set anything about the units here, specific units, this is not a generic code. There is no information like meter, mile, or kilometer specified here. But what this code actually does, it converts all of the given values 
to the default unit of specific dimension. So what it does, it will take our speed in, in kilometers, uh, distance in kilometers, and we'll convert this, this to, to meters. Then we'll convert time to seconds, divide it, return us the velocity in meters per second, and then we'll have to, once again, convert it to kilometers per hour, because this is what user wanted, because this is the input he wanted to provide. So this is not the same as working on doubles, yes? We have to provide additional conversions that take time in runtime, and also, we can, we can lose precision for, on this. I have a lot of complaints from people working like with units like electronovolts or, or similar, that they have to com convert all the time to joules and back and with, with boost units. And for, 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 this, for the scale like 10 to minus 16 or something, it's, it's a really big loss of precision for, for doubles. So let's try to fix it. Boost is a, meta, is, is a template library, yes, with, with, with the best metaprogramming support. If you do something like this, quantity of length, quantity of time, just template parameters, it's actually too generic. I can provide here power and mass, and it will try to compile this if it can divide the results, yes? So it's not enough. So let's try to be a bit more specific. Let's provide better specialization. We have here length dimension and time dimension, and also a bunch of other parameters that will be auto-deduced from the, from the function template. It's still okay, but the um, specification, the signature of the function, doesn't tell us anything about the return type. So the user doesn't know what this function, if, if it wasn't named average speed by foo, you would not know anything what, what, what is the return type here and what to expect. It's really hard to provide the type of return type here easily. So we can try to force it, like saying that quantity that was re returned is a divide type of helper of length and time in specific systems that will take kilometers and hours. But actually what we are doing here, we are user has to repeat all of the logic implemented in the library itself. This is only the velocity, but think about something like power, where we have like five different units to divide and multiply. It will be a nightmare to, 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 to maintain something, something like this. So for the sake of next example, let's use this one, because this one is, is pretty short, and it will make slides more, more terse. So next is pretty simple. If you have this result, the, the, the signature, we can just pass this and it will work. Yes, it would be the speed in kilometers per hour. We don't have to cast, of course, I would cast it anyway here, but for the sake of the slides, this will print what we want. And the same also, this will work. If you don't want to work with compile type provided parameters, you can provide variables. Of course, I also provided compile times, but you can provide A and B here, and it will just work with variables. And this is how it looks with, with boost units. So the benefits of using boost units. Uh, first of all, is the widest adoption. It has widest adoption in the, in the industry. So it's pretty simple and pretty easy to add it to your production code. It has wide range of systems and base units provided. It's highly flexible and extensive. It has a big ex extensibility uh, options. Uh, it actually has consexp because it was added after C++11. And quantity type can use any number like type. So, so th there's a representation that can be specified. Uh, even though it uses Consex, it's still pre-C++11 design. It heavily relies on macros and boost MPL. Uh, and many people coming to me with feedback said that if you are not an expert in C++ and not an expert in physical units, it's not that easy to use this library. You have to be expert in both in order to be able to, to use it. It's not user-friendly. It's not developer-friendly. So let's look into the other library from Nick Holthouse. This one has only one header, so it's simple in this case, and also supports units literals. Uh, but actually, this was all I could do to specify the function. So I have to provide length and time as template parameters. Uh, what's good is that the library provides you type traits to verify if actually th those parameters are length and time. But this basically is the implementation detail, not the signature of the, of, the, of the function. So you can actually provide here vector and string, and it will try to compile it. 
Yes? And I wasn't able to, to provide any better partial specialization just because uh, the design is implemented in such a way that you have something like a meter, there's a, like a base unit of the, of, the, of the dimension, and actually derived units are constructed by nesting uh, other units. So you don't know exactly where the component called uh, unit category length unit will be put in the template specialization, instantiation, because it can be in the first, first level or second level, nesting level or third second nesting level. So it's not, not that easy to, to partially specialize this template. Of course, you can use those type traits and do Sphina with enable if, yes? But consider doing this for every function you are doing in your, in your code for calculations, yes? It's too time consuming, it's too complicated, probably no one does it. So, coming back to this toy example, this is what you can do with UDLs. This, this also works with miles, so this is simple, and usage with variables also is simple in this case. However, notice the syntax, like for example, unit time hour or unit length kilometer. A year ago I was this considering sim something similar like this and I went to Walter Brown to ask him for feedback because he is working on, on, on ratio and physical units library for a longer time already. This is what he, what he said. Meter is a unit, not a quantity. You shouldn't write meter free. It's, it's not a quantity, it's just a unit of the, of the quantity. So this is something to, 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 to think about dur during the design of the library. So once again, pros and cons. Single header file, um, conversions are ratios at compile time, UDL support. Uh, it's not possible to extend with our base units poor compile time error messages, as you will see later on. And yeah, there's no types representing dimensions, quantities, everything is units. So this is the current design, and what are the issues from the user perspective about this design? Let's see a simple example from boost unit. Like we have quantity length, and we just want to assign to it kilometers. Yes, as a unit, as a unit, everything should go fine. We, if you try to compile this, you get an error. This is the first line of the error, yes? There, there, there is more. This is only the first line. This, 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 this is the most important line. Do you know what's, what's the problem here? Trying to assign kilometer to SI length. This is a long one, yes? But this is GCC. GCC maybe is wrong. Clank is better because it provides shorter things, yes? See, let's see Clank. Uh, it's shorter. For sure. But still, it probably, it's really hard to understand what happens here. And what happens here is that uh, we have here the copy initialization used. Copy initialization is um, less forgiving and it doesn't allow us to do implicit conversions. Sorry, uh, it allows us implicit conversions, yes. But actually, there is an explicit constructor. So we have to use value initialization here, direct initialization. So what it means is that boost units doesn't allow us implicit conversions even for non truncating or non-arrowing safe conversions, like from kilometers to meters. Of course, doing this vice versa would not be safe, and we should provide like quantity cast or something like this, or explicit constructor. But for implicit construction like this one, from kilometers to meters, like from hours to seconds, we used to, thanks to ratio, Oh, sorry, or, or kernel duration, to, 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 to just treat that it should work just fine without any explicit constructors or, or casts, yes? Because it's possible to, to check during compile time and make sure it will not mm, truncate, not narrow the value. So, uh, let's right now work with this um, other example and make a mistake in the, in the calculation. So, so we are not returning velocity anymore. Yes, it was a long calculation, we did a mistake, and we want to make sure, find out what's wrong. This is the error. If you didn't notice, notice those three dots at the end. This is not the end of the third line, or the first line. This is the end of it. Uh, probably it's really hard to find out if 
this function with like 100 lines, what's wrong? But again, Clang is better. Clang produces shorter messages, yes? We like Clang because of the, of the shorter error messages. This is Clang. Do you know what happened here? It's really short. Sometimes short error messages are actually not better because there is no context here. So let's try the other example with the other library. The same error, the same problem. We have something different. We don't have problem with the, with the template. We have static asset. It's better. We know that units are not compatible. But which units? No information. Right now, you can maybe look into the template association of the function to find out. But imagine that you have like 10 different conversions in the function, and you have 10 different types. And then it's really hard to find out what's this third type, third type based on the function argument. Yes, so static asserts are often not the best solution, too. They lack the context in some compilers. And also, they do not in, in influence the overload resolution process. They are like quality of implementation, like an assert in the code rather than, ra rather than the interface of the, of, the, of, the, of the function, like the interface to communicate contract to the user. Clank actually here is better, because Clank provides us also the context of this trait uh, in the static assert. So we know what happened. Do we? <laughs> so this is different design of the library, a bit different approach. We'll see uh, more, uh, more problems later on, yeah. So I would claim that for this specific library, for physical units library, we have to rethink how we are doing our template metaprogramming. Um, this is actually the, 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 the subject, the title of my talk from tomorrow. So if you're interested in implementation details, how, do, how to improve or try to improve templates, you are invited to, to come at my talk at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Today we'll scope more on the user interface and usage rather than on implementation tricks. So if you are interested in development, developing such stuff, come tomorrow to my second talk. So for most of the libraries we have right now, template metaprogramming libraries, the compile, compilation errors are rare. How often do you, do you break like vector or string to have a compile time error? Yes. Probably not too often. So this is not a problem. You can make any tricks there, and probably it will not influence the users. But the whole purpose of having this library is to generate like 40 to 50 errors per day for an engineer. Because this is what like, this library is intended to, 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 to make sure that the calculations are correct. And, and it will generate errors every day, many of them. And users have to work with them, and, and it has to be user friendly. So, we have to rethink how we are doing C++ templates for, for this and maybe similar li libraries. And as I, when I see, when I talk about user experience, it's not just about things like, like compil compilation error. It's also about debugging. For example, this is my IDE. I try to debug. This, this time there's no problem here. The same function. When I enter it, this is what the debugger says. It says quantity of boost units, double, quantity of boost unit, double. Do I really have the same type here? This is what, what ID claims. Yes, it was lost in the long type. So I try GDB. Do you know what is the type of the first and second argument? It's not that simple. Also, p-type generates even bigger uh, definition because it turns out that, 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 that this one is smarter. And for example, it skips like default parameters of templates. And in p-type, you, you have everything. So it's not the best user experience to work with. Second library, similar. The IDE is lost. It provides exactly the same type for both argument. This is the breakpoint. You have a lot of stood ratio, stood ratio, stood ratio, stood ratio, stood ratio. And you have to find out what's the unit here. You have to remember which one is, which is length, which is time, which is, which, which is mass, and make all the calculations by yourself. 
and p type. Another issue here is the overusing of macros in the user interface. I don't care about macros in the implementation, but if the user has to use macros in order to work with your library, there is something wrong. Maybe not for those units or, or other libraries, but if I would go to Titus and say that I want to standardize it as a, as a standard library, <laughs> yeah, you hear him. <laughs> no chance. The same for the other library. Also, I would assume that, that the library that you would like to have in our standard library, would like, we would like to make it easy to extend. Because probably we will not be able to provide all the use cases of the users. We'll probably need scope on the, on, on the most generic and most common needs, at, at least for the beginning. So we want to be able to, to extend them easily. Adding derived dimensions in most of the libraries is simple, but adding base ones, like for example, we would like to extend it with, with for, for example, bits to, to, to work with bit rates and, and, and information like IT units rather than only with, with SI units, it's really hard in most cases. Uh, in boost units, the base dimension is identified by unique number. Negative values are re reserved for, for the library itself. Positive are for the user. So theoretically, it's simple. But let's consider two vendors extending the library, and then third vendor that wants to use both of them. Probably all vendors will start with one, yes. And you have a collision. But you can like tweak the libraries, and it, maybe it will at some point will work. Uh, let's see the other library. The other library is using another common approach here in this domain. It just has the list of all, all, all of the uh, base units as a template parameter of the most base framework class here. So if you would like to dare to add one more line here, you would have to rewrite all of the library code, all of the user's code and extensions from different vendors in order to add your own boost unit, your, uh, your custom unit here. So I would say that it's impossible to add, add anything here, realistically. So uh, let's think how we can address that. I don't say that my library is the best one, that my library should be the one standardized. I just provide some hints how to solve those issues here. And we can even start from scratch with different library just to make it happen, because I care to make it happen. I don't care if it's my library or, or other solution. Uh, if you want, you can go to, to GitHub and find, find this one there. And it's still a work in progress because I'm still working on the, on the design. I will talk about this for the first time in LEWG in Belfast. I expect some, some feedback. I expect maybe some design changes after the feedback. So it's still not stable, yes? But, but I encourage you to go try and provide me the feedback and requirements or maybe contribute if you like in order to, to, to make it happen. So what are the requirements that I state by myself? The first and most important is user experience. This library has to be easy to use for the, for the users. It has to provide good compiler errors. It has to be friendly for debugging. Safe and performance, of course. It has to provide strong types. It has to support template metaprogramming to provide like different, to specify like dimension, but not specific unit, because you have to work with different units for the dimension. And of course, we have to consex all of the things in order to, to provide as fast and as robust solution as possible. No macros in the user interface, because otherwise I will be screwed in, in the ISA committee. Uh, no external dependencies. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm depending on some library from Casey Carter because there is no implementation of stud contracts, concepts, sorry, stud concepts. But, but C++20 will have it, and the dependency will be lost. Easy to extend. And possibly to standardize as a part of freestanding, in modern understanding of freestanding, of C++ standard library. So coming back to our toy example, this is how you can do it with my library. If you're not familiar, this is the new syntax for, for uh, templates. Uh, this is actually a generic function from C++20. So it's like generic lambda. Every, every time you see auto in lambda, it means there is a template, yes? The same is for, for functions. This is a generic function. And in C++20, everywhere, everywhere, nearly everywhere, where you can put auto, you can constrain it with concept. So 
these are the constraints for auto deduce type velocity length and time yes this is this is actually what's 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 mandated here ah okay so the question was do we need to put both the the name of the contract a concept and auto yes we have to provide provide both of of, of the keywords here this is how it was it decided by the committee Yeah, and you can provide a very speed, 220 and two hours, and get something that's a velocity. You, you can actually verify that the value stored here is 110, that there, so there were no intermediate conversions done, like in case of boost unit. But of course, if you want to pass it to something that's, that needs like in, integer or double rather than a strong type, it's always better to do a quantity cast, like we have also the duration cast in Chrono to make sure that you want to print a correct value or provide it to a C style interface with a correct unit. And the same for miles. Yes, the same presentation as you can see, basically it provides us correct values without the need to cast actually here. But the cast is just to make it clear because this function can be refactored and it may work differently in, in a quarter. You want to always have the same and the good result at the end. Also, if you would put this to pro, from, 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 from compiler and optimizer, you will find out that this code will generate exactly the same binary as working with double. There are no other intermediate conversions, which is actually the case for some other open source libraries. And if you want to, to work with variables, it's pretty similar. You can do quantity cast and name it as kilometers per hour and then just print it and the same for, for miles per hour. The design of my library is pretty simple. It has like five building blocks. It has a base dimension that basically defines if it's one of those seven SI units. Then it has exponent. So we have basic dimension raised to some exponent. We have as some strange dimensions require us fractional exp exponents. There is a denominator here, but in most cases we just use denominator. And there is a unit dimension that's basically a type list, type list of, this exp of those exponents. So you have like meters to exponent one and seconds to exponent minus one to, to represent the velocity. There is a unit that takes dimension, this one, and ratio. So for example, for meter, it will be one, hundred, one and for kilometer, it will be 1,000. And quantity is the amount of unit with specific representation. So base dimension in my current implementation uh, is just simple structure, name. It has operator equals equals, operator less in order to be able to uh, sort it because it has to provide a unique and sortable compile time identifier. And as an example, you can provide such constants for your unit. With that, it's really easy to extend because uh, names will not collide unless you want to provide exactly the same unit. It's not like one and one from different vendors. So if you will have collision, it just means that two vendors implemented the same unit. Exponent takes the base dimension, denominator and denominator, and just store it here. Dimension is a type list. It even doesn't have any implementation in this case here uh, and my velocity for example can be an alias to dimension as I said to, of length to exponent one and time to exponent minus one this solution improves user experience because it's the list contains only what's needed here we don't have those ratio zero ratio zero ratio zero as we've seen in the case of the second library we analyzed it just has what it what is needed to specify a specific unit and I assume it's pretty easy to understand for everyone what's happening here, because it's, it's, it's verbose. But actually, you have a problem here. Yes, so we have two operations, one meter divided by one second, and we have two divided by two seconds times one meter. It should be the same value, the same type. Yes, but the order of operation is different. 
So how to construct this, this, this type list from both of those operations so that would be able to compare as equal. For this, we have make dimension helper. So you should actually never instantiate the dimension by your type list by yourself. You should use make dimension helper that will provide unique ordering for, for, for the exponents. And actually will aggregate exponents of the same dimension but different exponents. So like you have meter and meter, it will be squared meter. Or eliminate if there is are this the same dimensions but but opposite exponents. Like you have meter divided by meter, it's, it's no, nothing, yes? So as an example, velocity, this is how you create velocity, make dimension based in length, based in type. You are not using aliases for this one. And basically you do not instantiate dimension by yourself. Unit, as I said, takes dimension and ratio. It requires the ratio to be positive and it stores the dimension and ratio here. As an example, meter is a unit of length. By default, it's one. There are some helpers for you to, to not play with ratio by yourself. You can, provide, for example, say that kilometer is a kilometer. So it will provide kilo as a ratio here. You can also say kilometer per hour is derived unit of velocity in units, kilometer and hour for those dimensions that are involved to create velocity. So it will calculate the ratio for you. For yourself, you don't have to calculate that that's what was exactly the ratio for kilometer per hour by hand. Those are actually alias templates, helpers, that will always end up with unit type. Yes? Does the ratio have to be an integer? Uh, you mean we're here? Uh, actually, ratio uh, ratio actually is, is one of the biggest concerns right now, right now that I would like to extend. Because std ratio has this problem that it uses in 6040. In 6040, it's not enough to, to express things like electron volts or work for astronomical units. I started the discussion or SD6 ref 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 reflector, SD6 is a numeric group, to ask if we have in hand the mm, types that can represent big integral numbers, but actually I didn't get much feedback yet. But I, ex I expect to have more discussion on, the, on this in Belfast. So it will probably change because we have to not use the ratio. Actually, I'm not using the ratio anymore in my implementation because we have to um, use something else anyway. I, I will talk about this a bit more tomorrow, talking about the performance of, of implementations. Mm -hmm. Yes? So the question is, in the, the, the bottom line, why the, how it knows that this is kilometers divided by hours? It knows it from the velocity dimension, because velocity dimension keeps this explicit of, of type list. So it basically compares it to the, to the list of dimensions here in velocity and knows that this is length, this is time, sees what are the exponents, and calculates the ratio by itself. Yeah, so basically the question is about absolute temperatures. Yes, a temperature is a hard problem to solve. Uh, I actually, I don't know if I have slides for this today. Probably I will have, let's go to the quantity, okay? Because probably this is about quantities and I think there will be a slide after this. If not, I will answer the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, quantity is the amount, amount of unit with specific, specific representation. Interface is really similar to what we know with, so from the standard chrono duration plus some additional member functions. First of all, we have to support multiplication of two quantities of different dimensions. So if we have like kilometers per hour and hour, we want to have kilometers as a result. So you have to provide multiplication of different quantities of different dimensions. We have to provide division of those. And also and duration right now supports the uh, quantity divided by the scalar because you can, you can divide 10 seconds by two and it's fine. But you cannot divide two by 10 seconds because it will not be a time anymore in, for duration. So I had to provide another function, member function that will um, divide the scalar by the quantity. Also, as a feedback from, yes? Uh, 
the question is, is the types I'm using the same from, this, from static chrono? No, I, I'm not using the duration. I have my own quantity type. It's not, a, it's not stud chrono. And also I stated, stated that I'm not, not using uh, stud ratio anymore because we have to replace it an, an, anyway with something better. But for implementation details, please come to tomorrow talk. For, for today, I would like to do, yeah, it was 90 minute talks on C++ now. And actually today I have even more material, but would like to scope on user experience here and about the implementation tomorrow, okay? Another feedback from the users is that for some numeric types, sometimes a common type as a result of, of operations is not, not enough. Because, for example, there are some numerical types that from, for example, multiplication and division will return you a different type because they will scale by, by themselves. Uh, so you, you cannot have like one common type that will be fine for all of the return types. You have to just use what actually the operation does. So I'm not using common types for, for operators. And also, yeah, there's some one static function that's really not that important here. Okay, so let's talk about a bit about the user experience. Uh, we as developers love type aliases, yes? It makes our life much, much easier. Think what would happen if we not, not have type devs or, or aliases in our language. How would our life would look like? It would be a disaster to work with this, yes? However, type aliases are really quickly lost during the, the, the translation process, during compilation process. As a result, end users is not, do, does not have any benefit from, from what we have as, as developers. So as an example, we have some aliases for velocity and kilometer per hour on this slide. This is not actually how it's implemented in my library. This is what developer sees, really nice function, yes? And this is what user sees. And this is actually a problem. The problem is that we don't have strong types in the language. There were a lot of attempts during the last 10 years or more to, to provide strong types. We, don't, we still don't have them. And it will help a lot here. For this, I invented a workaround. So basically, the workaround is that I have the, uh, I'm using inheritance for this one. So I'm using not unique aliases, I'm using inheritance, similar to strong type devs. Um, I will have strong type that will not vanish. And actually, things like operator equal, equal, equal work because I can provide the base type and it will be in the argument of the function, it will still work with the derived type. Alternatively to strong type devs, I do not automatically inherit the constructor and assignment operator, so I would have to rewrite them if the function will be not trivial, if the class will be not non trivial. And um, if member function of the base class returns like a base class, so quantity, after the, doing the, 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 this inheritance here, it will not just start to return velocity automatically by itself. And this was one of the requirements for the, for the strong type devs, that will, could, could, uh, could return the strong type dev itself instead of the base class. So it's easy to, to apply for, for really simple classes like, like uh, dimension and unit, but it would be much harder for quantity type. Okay, so uh, we have one more problem here. How we can create a velocity from meters per second? We have an operator that will take here the uh, length and time, and we want to create a child class velocity from it. It's easy to, to create an alias, saying this is a quantity of such exponents, but how to make a child class from it? Uh, for that, I invented something called, uh, called the Doncastic traits. I don't want to go in detail about this because I will go about this more tomorrow. Basically, it, it, uh, it's a type trait that you can specialize. And I will show you the result because we are a bit tight on, tight on time because of the questions. Uh, huh? yeah, this is how you're using this. Basically, uh, your unit and dimension type is inheriting from the downcast base providing the same type. This is the CRTP pattern, yes, curiously recurring template pattern. And then you have to provide meter per second, and you have saying that downcast, specializing downcasting traits, saying downcast from meter per second uh, is downcast to meter per second. So it's pretty easy to write, but it's, it's boilerplate. I would love to find someone that will find out and help me to automate, automate it somehow. 
I, I don't want to wait for, for reflections to, to, to make it happen. Maybe it's possible to do this a different way, but I already spoke with some guys and it's not that easy. So basically it's some overhead during the library implementation, but the benefits are really, really nice because this is what we have right now with aliases. And this is what we have with, 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 with dynastic traits and, and inheritance. It's a huge benefit for the user. Also, my library is using heavily concepts. We have concepts for type lists, color, ratio, exponent, dimension, unit, quantity, and also for all of the uh, derived quantities and dimensions, like length, time, frequency, velocity. So, for example, velocity is a quantity, and t dimension has to be the same as velocity. This is how you provide your own concepts for your own derived derived dimensions. So, user experience comp compilation. We have here those concepts, and we have the error. I don't know if you've ever, ever seen how concepts fail during compilation, but basically what this says is that this return, return d, d times t fails to meet velocity concept. And then you have information what the velocity con concept and which specific cases on velocity concepts is not met. So there is information that basically velocity and dimension of length exponent one time exponent one is not a velocity. So it's more user friendly and actually still this is experiment, experimental implementation in compilers. I expect this to be even more user friendly in the future. From the buggy point of view, ID is not lost. It works fine with, with, with the types I provided. GDB is great with it. B type also. One, one last thing that I will really miss in my library are contracts. I was really hoped about them. And actually, it's a problem that they didn't end up in C20 for me. For example, what it does, I want to provide GSL expects as the contract precondition for my function. What's the outcome? What happened? This is a macro. And macro just got lost because of the template comma here. Yep. So you can, oh, you can hack this, yes? You can provide using type and compare this type here. But it's, it, it's meant to be simple, guys, yes? So you can do remove CVRF, another helper from C20, and do it without, com without commas, and it will work. But still not the best user friendly, not the best solution. First of all, you're using still macros in, the, in header files, because this is your template, it's your headers. This is still a big problem with, with ODR issues. Second of all, it's not a part of the function signature. This is just a part of quality of implementation. So the user is not aware of your contract. You have to specify it in documentation, rather than in the signature of the function. So, not C20 contracts would look like this one. With this, there are, you can use the simplest syntax here. There are no compil compiler errors. This is put in the, in the signature of the function. So everything is, is great and always up to date because it's not a documentation that can be outdated easily. It's verified during compile time that, that actually this compiles and, and runs fine. And we don't have macros in headers anymore. Actually, it was told by John Lakos like an hour ago that basically this syntax will be already supported by, by GCC and Clang, even though it's not a part of C20. So we can start to experiment with this syntax and try to write our own contracts in the library to provide feedback for the, for, for the committee, how we want to use them. And actually, I think it's good. But I tried the latest, tried the latest trunk GCC today and still it complains about comma because this is not an attribute syntax. Attribute syntax doesn't allow us comma in the, in, in, in the, in the internals of the attribute. So the last subject, how to extend it with your own type. So you, you can download my library and work with GCC 9.1 because this is the only one that supports the features that are being used there. Sorry, but this is C20 library or C20 free library. So I'm not targeting right now wide audience of, of, of legacy software. I want to put it in the standard and it should use the latest features the standard provides. So it was with GCC 9.1. 9, 9 
and you can try it if you want to extend it by yourself. This is what you have to do. For example, if you want to add bits and byte support, yes, one byte is eight bits. You have to provide the base dimension, saying inline concepts, base dimension, provide your own identifier and the text for it. Then you have to create a dimension, derived dimension for it. So you say that digital information to exponent one. And you have to do this boilerplate for the casting trace from two. You have to provide, if you want, you can provide con concept for it. Easily, quantity of T should be digital information. You can provide your own units, saying that bit is a base unit, so ratio one, and byte is a unit with ratio eight. And once again, boilerplate of, of Duncastic trace. And if you want, you can provide your own UDLs for bits and bytes. And that's all. Actually, you can try it out by yourself, because last week, working with Matt Godbold, we made it happen. And this is the part of the, of the Godbolt right now. So if you want to use it, first of all, you have to use pretty recent GCC, nine or, or, or later. You should provide uh, C++ 17 at least, but I think 2A is better. F concepts, because right now it's experimental support for concepts. And also here as a library, you have to select MP units from trunk. And I really thank, thank Matt that, that he provided the support because I hope it will make it easier to adapt. Matt is not here because he is talking, he provided his own, his own talk right now in the different room. But thank you, Matt, very much. So, next steps. We really need this in, in the industry. We really need it to make in the right, correct software. As I said, I think in order to, to make it possible and, 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 and usable, it has to be part of the standard library. First step is to gather feedback and requirements. That's why I'm here and talking to you. If you're interested in the subject, please provide me your, 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 your thoughts about it. Please provide the requirements you have in your production, in your, in your, your use cases you, are, you, are, you want to cover with this library. Second point is go to the ISO committee meeting. We'll start in Belfast with the, with the design review. As I said, there will be possible design, design updates after that. So don't expect that this library will be like st have stable interface for, for some time. It's still experimental. I'm looking for sp experimental feedback. And I assume you still probably cannot use it in the production because you probably have to support more compilers or you're not still on GCC 9.1. But for experimental and support and, re and re requirements, I'm really open and I'm looking for, for that. Also, I'm looking for contributors if someone would like to help. And yeah, after that, I would like to provide support for remaining dimensions and units based on feedback from you guys. If you think that SI units or the things that I already implemented is not enough to start, I will be extending this with time. But right now, I'm scoping mostly on, on the framework by itself to make sure that framework is, is robust and not on the coverage of, all of the unit systems. As I said, adding this is pretty simple. You can do it by yourself, or you can ask me to do it, or you can do it and provide pull request so I can merge it. I'm really open for that. And I will try to catch a C++ 23 train. If not 23, then 26, but I would really like to make it happen. With that, I'm done. Thank you very much, and we are ready for questions. Yes? I'm not sure if I understood the question. So you're asking about ratio? Yeah, so the question is, uh, we have quantity of units. We don't care what it is about exactly, but we want to print it. For that, you, have to, you need to have a strong type. So if, you need to, if you need to work with different strong types, you need to have templates. We have generic functions, 
templates disappear a bit, so they are more user friendly and not that scary because you don't see template keyword. Uh, but but yeah, you have to work with templates still. And actually, you will not with printing. You will not care about this because the second step will be to add proper output support, like like, like string support for it. What exactly would happen for Chrono in C plus plus twenty? We'll have support for formatting and, and, and output of the of, of the duration. So this is also the second step for this library. You will just have any quantity, any type. You put it to C out. It will work correctly. Of course, if you'd like to make it work with printf, then you have to do all the work by yourself. Yes? Okay, so there are two questions. First question is that we know that this is a bounded problem. It's really important to have it. So maybe we should consider adding this feature as a language rather than the library extension to the standard. Knowing ICC++ committee and knowing durality, it will not going to it's not going to fly. So so it, we have to do it in the library. It's not a language feature. Uh, asking this, uh, answering the second question is it, if it's similar to to, to chrono and and, and and ratio and dimension. Yeah, it is similar, but it's not. It's a, it's a different implementation, separate implementation right now. Uh, I would have a big problem, or there is a challenge to, to, to cover how to make the uh, uh, interop interoperability of duration. But right now, uh, by multiple members in the ISA committee, I was told to, to not worry about this. And we'll add some conversion functions or something like this later on. We don't want to be bounded by, by the design from, from 10 years ago uh, during this one. Yes, actually, we are out of time, but maybe last question. Yes? Is there any way to work with the Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question is basically if we can have more than one type for specific strong types for the same dimension. Uh, yeah, so so right now, not by this design, but this is also what I'm, I care a lot because for me, altitude and distance to destination in aviation is totally, totally two different lengths and the tangent from them is totally, has to be calculated properly. So I don't want to, 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 to misalign those arguments, length and length in a wrong order. Also, sync rate and velocity is totally different. Uh, speed of the brain is also totally two different values, both the same dimension. I would like to support this, but I think there should be a wrapper over the library, like provide, for example, some, 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 some additional reference system you would like to refer to, or some maybe tag saying what is your current use case for this one, rather than putting this in this li library. We have to provide building blocks and build on top of them. This is basically my idea for this. And with that, thank you much. We are already five minutes late, so, so we have to finish. I've <laughs> I will be here, so if you have any more questions or discussions, please, please find me on the corridor and we, we can talk. Thank you.